What's on, ladies and gentlemen? My name's Ross. I like games. And today, we need to talk about pre-releases for the One Piece TCG. Now, we don't need to talk about things like what promos you're going to be getting, which, which incidentally is your smoker. We, we did all of that the other day in terms of the promo cards and pre-release packs and things of that nature. We've done that. We've had that conversation. The conversation we haven't had is about how pre-releases actually work in terms of how to build your deck and things along those lines. And the good news is that actually they've made a few concessions, I think is the way to put it, that have made things much easier and much nicer for us. And this, quite frankly, is awesome. So they have gone and given us the rules for a sealed format over on the official website. And there are some very interesting rules. First of which, you may bring your own leader, including those from previous sets, to use in the event. So over in Japan, we cannot guarantee it's going to be the same over here. But over in Japan, in the OPO2 meta, the best leader was Roanoa Zoro. Which is a leader from Romance Dawn. Which means there is a very good chance that a bunch of you have that leader right now. We know that there are some excellent leaders, which were in the starter decks. The Luffy, absolutely phenomenal leader. Great leader. We like Luffy very much indeed. That's one that lets you attach a, an extra rested Don, which is a very good thing. We've seen that do a lot of winning. Uh, there are things like the Captain Eustace Kid who allows you to essentially re-stand and get an extra attack. That's pretty good. These are leaders that we like. And here's the thing. You might not actually pull a leader from your pre-release packs. Even if you do pull a leader from your pre-release packs, it might be a bad leader. It might not be one you want. I mean, to put it in another way, we'll get to them more in a minute, but one of the rules in pre-releases is they get rid of the color requirement, and that is quite important, as we'll explain in a minute. But that makes dual color leaders kind of bad in pre-releases. So if we take something like Kaido, for instance. Now, I know some people have been seeing a smattering of success lately with Kaido, which is awesome. But this has not seen a huge amount of play and love lately. But it's a dual color blue and purple leader, which means you can play blue and purple cards. You have four life rather than the usual five on a monocolor leader, but you at least have the possibility of playing blue and purple cards. That is a big advantage you get from a dual color leader. It's why the dual color leaders have four life rather than five, because you gain that huge advantage of being able to mix colors. But in a pre-release, as we're going to see in a minute, you can mix colors anyway. Which takes away the huge benefit of dual color leaders, but you've still got that downside of life. But if the only leader you've got is a dual color leader, then that's not a good thing. But also, very important to note, you might not pull a leader at all from your packs. It is within the realm of possibility, because you, know, you don't get a guaranteed leader per pack, and you need a leader to play the game. So one of the very big things here, you can bring your own leader that's big. Also, please bring 10 Don cards. Like, I'm sure there'll be a bunch of people bringing spare Don. And actually, plea from your old pal Wossy here. If, like me, you've opened up a lot of packs and you've got a lot of Don lying around, way more Don than you're ever going to reasonably use, do everyone a favour and take it to the pre-release, would you? Because there might be some newer players who don't realise they need to have 10 Don. So you know what? You can be that person that's given out extra Don at your pre-release. Or maybe just take any spare Don you've got, because I know there are people out there that have a lot of spare Don. Just take it to your local game store that's running a pre-release and just give it to them. And then they can give it out to newer players. And then everybody wins. This is my advice to you lovely ladies and gentlemen. If you've got spare Don, just take it along. Just take it along. Have a lot of fun. Jobs are good and... There we go. I think that would be a nice thing to do. Now, what you get is you get six packs. Now, everyone has to have the same number of packs, because otherwise, it's not fair. You open up your six packs. Those are the cards you've got to actually use to construct your deck. And you take your own leader, and you take your own Don. Jobs are good. And then you make yourself a sealed, well, kind of like your own deck, 
that you can then use to actually play in the tournament. Obviously, I know because of COVID rules, etc., some stores might not be actually running pre-releases, or they might be running very casual pre-releases, but some will be running competitive pre-releases. Talk to your local game store. And what you do is you build a 40-card deck. Yes, you know what? That is a little bit different. We usually play with 50-card decks. Here we're playing with 40. Why are we playing with 40-card decks? Because you're only opening six packs. And you might not have all the cards you really want. So th th this helps you to build a slightly more coherent deck than you would if you were building a 50-card deck from six packs. No cards are banned or restricted. And there are no card limits. I.e., if you pull five copies of a card you really want to play with, let's say for argument's sake, somehow in some weird parallel world, you end up pulling five copies of the new Edward Newgate from six packs. It's not going to happen. But let's say for argument's sake you did, you would be able to play five Edward Newgate in your deck. And that would honestly be kind of amazing. But again, this, this kind of has to be the rule. Because you're only opening six packs. So if you start doubling up on the commons and uncommons too much, you might not be able to make a coherent deck. So this makes perfect sense. As a fun little side rule, any leftover cards, any cards that you pull that aren't in your deck, and again, six packs, 40 card decks, there aren't going to be that many, especially when you take out leaders and things of that nature, they are treated as sideboard cards. Nice. The other important part of deck construction here is that we ignore color requirements. And again, we, we have to ignore color requirements. All of these rules are very, very clear and obvious because actually, if we didn't have these rules, it wouldn't work. So if you had to make a 40 card red deck, are you really going to pull 40 red cards from six packs? You might, but there's a very good chance that you don't. And then you literally would not be able to make a deck. But this is why I really don't like dual color leaders for a pre-release tournament. You can use your red leader, your Roano Azoro, or if you pull it from your packs, your Edward Newgate. Or maybe your starter deck Luffy. But then you can use any color of card you like. And you can get some really weird combos going. And that's what I really like about this. It's going to lead to the kind of games you cannot get anywhere else. However, any other rules still apply. So one of the examples they give on the official rules is Don Quixote do Flamingo as a leader. And this is a great example. Because Don Quixote do Flamingo has a really... And again, this is a terrible, terrible, terrible leader for a pre-release. Do not bring this leader to your pre-release. Because the skill is Don X2 when attacking pay one. Reveal a card from the top of your deck. If it is a seven Warlords of the Sea type character with a cost of four or less, you may play it rested. Well, this skill still only gets seven Warlords of the Sea characters. You can play non-blue characters in your deck. That's fine. But you still can only search out seven Warlords of the Sea with this character. Obviously, this makes it a much, much worse leader when you get to a pre-release. But basically, everything else, you still read it like the card. So a very good uncommon card from OPO2 is Curly Dadan. On play, look at five cards on the top of your deck. Reveal up to one red character card of a cost of one or less and add it to your hand. That still works in exactly the same way. It has to be a red character, and it has to be a one-cost character. Simple as that. You don't get to cheat in any other ways. You can use whatever color you like, and you can take your own leader, but you still read the cards like they read. So when you're thinking of leaders, things like Roano Azoro, that gives all your characters an extra thousand power, uh, Luffy, that gives your leader or one of your characters arrested don card or captain useless kid lets you trash any card from your hand to set it as active these are really good options whereas something like don quixote do flamingo that specifically plays seven warlords of the sea characters they are not good choices for your pre-release please please bear this in mind so to run through the rules very very quickly then you have six packs with which you make a 40 card deck 
You can bring your own leader from any set. You need to bring 10 Don cards. There are no restrictions on color or quantity of cards. You just need to make a 40 card deck. Doesn't matter what color the cards are and it doesn't matter how many of each card you're playing. That is fine. Any cards not used for deck construction are a sideboard. And between games, you can switch as many cards as you like between your deck and your sideboard, so long as you end up with a legal 40-card deck at the end of it. There we go. Oh, there's also a really cute note there that players can keep any cards they open in packs, which is, of course, how pre-releases work. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully, you're all heading out to a pre-release for Paramount War. I am very excited. I've already got my name down at my local game store, and I, for one, am absolutely psyched. But now it's over to you guys. Tell me what you want to get at your pre-release. Tell me which leader you're thinking of taking. Tell me any tips you've got for anyone attending their first pre-release. Let me know in the comment section. Go nuts. Be nice. And then make sure you like this video. Subscribe to this channel. Follow me on Twitter at the Wasi. That's where we talk about One Piece and a whole bunch of other card games. And please do consider checking out patreon.com slash ptcgradio, where you can support the channel, get some bonus podcasts, join a Discord and chat with us, all kinds of fun things. But by far the most important thing as always, look after yourselves till next time, would ya? Thank you very much for watching. My name's Ross, and you've been watching Wassy Plays.